or their season just finished or, um, or, you know, uh, the NCAA is just finished, but you could always find and, and, you know, form your pre-match routine. Right. So you could always expand on it, see what works, see what doesn't work. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, if coaches obviously replay it later, <clears throat> but I think we're going to be digging into preparation. We're going to tie it into preparation. And so a lot of kids today with these clubs year round, they, they might take two weeks off and then they're back in action. <clears throat> and also depending on where you live, wrestling season might be over. You know, in New Jersey, normally wrestling has already ended. Covering a, for you guys on Instagram Live, we're covering a pre-match routine. Yep. And we're starting in one minute, but you know, uh, the pre-match routine. And as we were saying before, right, it's all different parts of the country have uh, different parts of their season right now. Different wrestling, yeah, I think other so new jersey became a spring sport with wrestling yeah normally it's over it would have ended it's march 22nd so normally march. yeah wrestling would have been over about three weeks ago and right now we would be in freestyle or greco season right. which i'm not sure what's going to happen with that and there, there's some these off-season times are important because it allows you to of course you know what we'll be getting into is really uh, dialing in a system of a pre-match routine, understanding preparation, we're going to tie it in. And then for the upperclassmen who are really serious about wrestling, this gives them an opportunity to have a, a break, you know, a breakout off season where maybe a uh, college coach gets to see them wrestle and say, man, that kid's impressive what right. he's doing. I like the way he wrestles and to wrestle great, you need great preparation and a pre-match routine. So I'm excited to yeah. get into this. Another thing I wanted to open with, especially a lot, a lot of our Jersey guys, right? Uh, they don't, you know, matches are getting canceled or oh, yeah. whatever, and they're worried, oh, what happens if I'm not prepared? Uh, you guys wrestle a lot of tournaments in the off season, and you guys don't schedule six dual meets before then. No, you just go to club, and then you, you wrestle, and you get ready like that to go to a Super 32. Yep. It's not like, oh, man, I got to get three or four dual meets in. Um, my advice for you guys is um, – Try if, if you don't, if you think you need more matches, make them yourself at practice, right? Challenge your workout partner to say, Hey, Zach, I need more matches. Let's do a match right after practice. Let's go. I was thinking you're going to be, earlier. you're going to be the ref. Let's go. You're keeping score. Let's go. Keep time. I was if you want that. more matches, make them, make them yourself, you know? And if you, if, if there's rules that you have in your school, do it at club, right? Your, your club coach would do it. Um, I'm sure you're, yeah, you're right. There's the, the rules at school where maybe you can't stay after, but ironically, I remember. Uh, last year, speaking to a group at the high school I'm at, they would kind of divvy up the group into two. And I said, <clears throat> how many, this is before, obviously, COVID happened. I said, if you're struggling on bottom or struggling on top, how many of you have uh, spoken, you know, or asked your coach, coach, can I stay after for five minutes with Ray Jazz and just work me on drills on top, work me on drills on, on bottom? And so it's, you know, Sometimes they're like, no, I haven't. I'm right. just struggling and I leave it at that. I, you know, in sports performance, I always feel you don't want to just attack weak areas. You also want to, you want to double down on your strengths, but right. you also, yeah. you also attack those weak areas. So if you're struggling, you got to be responsible right. and say, hey, and make it a habit, make it a habit to stay after and do it. Like, yeah. Even, even if it was simple as, all right, after practice, I'm just going to hit five of my go-tos. Yeah, or five, five, or five minutes of work on yeah. what I got to work exactly. on. You got, you couldn't, you, you got rodent out on legs. I'm going to spend 15 minutes after practice. Have someone Easy. throwing legs the whole time. Easy. So, all right, here we go. We're going to officially start. Let's do it. The pre-match routine. So, here's the thing with the pre-match routine. Don't think about it as a superstition either. Because matches can change. Stuff can happen. We want a pre-match routine to stay consistent. And something that works for you, right? Um, sometimes your team has their own warm-ups before dual meets. Yeah. A pre-match routine is something that you do. Maybe you're on deck, double deck, you know, five before. Maybe it's a tournament where you have that warm-up, you know, in the beginning of the day, yes. right? But then you're just sitting or, you know, in between rounds. We want to stay consistent and keep it consistent because you don't want it to happen where, oh, man, I wish I got a better warm-up. Or, man, that warm-up killed me. Right, right. You don't want to second-guess what you have to do. You want to know what you already want to do and what already works. I think that being said, preparation 
So we, we mentioned earlier before kind of officially announcing this, your off season preparation and your in season work ethic kind of will set the tone. It sets the standard. So if you haven't done the work, then you're going to second guess yourself right. and it catches up to you. And I was going to say earlier, I was like, I was like, but we probably don't have those kind of kids or maybe there's coaches watching, you know, you've got kids that aren't doing the work. Those kids are, I think if they don't have a solid pre-match routine or maybe the coach can help guide them, especially if it's a younger wrestler, right? We have kids who start wrestling in high right. school. Um, you've got to help them yeah. kind of create a system right. to give them some confidence, confidence of preparation before the match. And, and one big thing that I have a lot of athletes do is uh, just like a lawyer, right? Building your case. Building your case on why you deserve to win that case, right? Why do you deserve to win this match? Yeah. Well, why do you deserve your goal, right? So building your case. So think about why you deserve to win this match in your pre-match, right? If you're thinking of a negative, right? Take that negative out, boom. Go to your go to your confidence case, right? I have the best double leg in the state of New Jersey. I beat this kid in the Super 32s. I took third in this tournament. Uh, I'm a state qualifier. Um, you know, just little things. You know, even like I used to carry kettlebells around for a full match. I did that. I re- I'm little s- things like so that. So funny you're saying these things. I'm just kind of, I'm remembering things that you did in high school. Ray Jazz would wear a weight vest under his school clothes in school <laughs> all day. He, I think uh, you bought it from like Target or something. It was 20 pounds. A 20 pound weight vest for an hour is hard. All day, it's crazy. And so when you were in high school, were you working with uh, Winning Mindset? Uh, yeah, rest of my senior year in high school, I started with them. It was like, I was like one of their first guys. I wish I had it in high school. Because I, I did all this hard work, and it was like the season happened. It was like you second-guess your confidence. And it wasn't until my senior year where it's like, remember why you worked hard. It's like you kind of forget why you work hard. So when you're doing those extra sprints, when you're holding those kettlebells for a match, remember those times that you did it, and remember why you're doing it. You're doing I, it because you want to win. I 100% could have. If, if we could create the flux capacity <laughs> to go back in time, because I also <laughs> worked extremely hard not the smartest training or the uh, appropriate training, of course, that I do now, but I needed this mindset to help me. And I was just thinking, Ray, you were a junior. You had, um, I don't, did you go to the state sophomore year? No. So junior, junior year, year, I beat Brendan a, two, a two-time two state champ yeah. in December. It was the beginning. It was the first tournament. Yeah. Everyone used to Ever used to say I was the, the Morris Knowles. If Morris Knowles was the state tournament, I would have been a state champ right. every year. So why do you think, where, how did you have the confidence to uh, beat somebody who maybe on paper right. should beat you because this guy is going for his third title. He was right. already a two-time champ. Yeah, and that's one of the lessons we do, right? We compare our three best matches with our three worst. So that being my, one of my best matches, one, I just trusted my training back then. Yep. Um, Two, I had nothing to lose. I was wrestling a two-time state champ. I yeah. had nothing to lose. I wasn't even a state medalist uh, my junior year. So I was like, I have nothing to lose. I'm just going to go out there and attack. I wonder right? if you also trained with him at the underground. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, this is one thing. And look, you know, I pay attention to these little details. Brendan became a very – he was on and off after he won his first state title. So if he had an injury, so I don't know, his elbow or something, he stopped all training. Right. right. Or he would, where I always say, so we have an 11 year old wrestler here, which is the youngest age I'll train somebody. He broke his hand Mm -hmm. and the dad said, should we stop? What do we do here? I go, I'm going to leave it up to your son. I say the best kids I've trained, they never stop because the hand or the leg or the knee, they work around it. It becomes, you know, right. The kids training this side and lower body. And so I wonder if, Brendan's confidence may have started to slip because well he well he ended up winning that year too so I mean <laughs> well no he did he his, win that year his senior year that was his he senior took year. second right. he lost to Craig Dale oh, Cruz, Craig, yeah, yeah, who yeah. also trained with us but Craig was a sophomore and then Craig's senior year was the same as Brendan's he was a runner up now in the states like the national tournament anything could happen I've seen it happen before. That's why I'm such a big believer in this off season. Just you've got to feel confident in your preparation 
so that when you are competing, you just believe right. you have the belief in yourself. And remember why, like remember why. So, you know, especially in the, in the postseason and you're wrestling some of these better quality guys, you forget that you're good, right? It, you, you think about, oh, I got to wrestle this, this ranked kid. You know, I got, well, when you go to the state tournament, everyone's going to be ranked. So why not wrestle him now? Why, why, why are you afraid to wrestle him now? Right. Um, too many people look at the rankings, especially wrestlers. If you're a wrestler, do not look at the rankings. After, after that match and I won, I was ranked second in the state. And that was probably the worst thing that could have happened to me. Because I was looking, I was looking every week. Oh, that guy beat that guy. Oh, but I'm wrestling that kid next week. And he yeah. beat that guy five nothing. I only beat that guy one nothing. It, 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 you'll drive yourself nuts thinking like that. Because every match is a new match, right? So don't even waste your time with it. Remember why you put in these extra workouts and, and just trust your training. That's what it is at the end of the day. Um, trust your training. Hopefully you've done. I think that's the ticket is you've got to do the training. And so these lessons, I try to take them and share them with my kids. You know, my daughter's 14 and a half. My son's 12 and a half. My son is, you know, big into baseball. And so um, yesterday he had a baseball game. He pitched great, but didn't hit so great. And before that, you know, we have a uh, bat and tee outside, a net. I say, Ethan, you want to go out and warm up? He goes, why should I warm up before we warm up at the thing? So there's a point where as a dad, I, I got to say, hey, here's an opportunity for you to kind of maybe get a little pre-game routine. And uh, he didn't want to do it. And he's, you know, still young, but he's starting to learn that, Hey, I had an opportunity to do this mm -hmm. pre-game routine of my own, similar to like a wrestler, uh, but he didn't do it, which is probably not the, you know, definite reason why he didn't hit good, but it's likely a reason right. because what was your routine? You left it up to a coach. Yeah. And it's, it's building, it also builds good habits. I remember my freshman year of college, everyone, everyone was telling me, oh, college wrestling is a different animal. It takes a while to get adjusted. I was like, well, I'm just going to get adjusted. So uh, the, when, yeah, I, when I, when I, when I, when I step, first time I stepped foot in the campus, I went to two places, the wrestling room and then the gym with Joe Musha. Joe Musha thought I was nuts, but um, I, I set up a good pre-season routine and all the seniors and everyone were like, oh, it's a long season, blah, blah, blah. Well, I was like, well, I'm trying to be the best. I'm trying to get adjusted. You so were, I remember yeah. just doing extra jump ropes, just you know, calling the assistant coaches or volunteer coaches and they, they're like, oh, yeah, this kid's hungry for it. And it's like, find what works for you. And if you really like, you know, getting adjusted, like people were hyping up college wrestling. I'm like, all right, all right. instead of waiting for the season to start it, like I just I think made an initiative. You knew that you responded well to a higher volume of training, as did Greg Zanetti. Right. He yeah. would work better if he worked more. And so if we were to like pull him back, right. yeah. it, uh, I know um, Gene told me that it kind of messed with Greg's performance. Right. Greg identified that he needed to work where somebody else might want to taper. Right. Somebody else might want to pull back yeah. because they, that's right. what they believe works. So you have to match the training to the belief system. Right. And um, yeah. you got a question here yeah. if you want to, uh, from Rockland right. Krasinski. Yeah, yeah. How do you handle your nerves uh, wrestling in big tournaments or a big match? How do you prep, uh, have preparation get you ready for those moments? So no match is a big match, right? Every match should be treated the same. That's that's one thing, and it's hard. Trust me, I know it's hard, right? <laughs> it's hard to think, oh, this state tournament is not as big as the Correct. Um, but you should try to get condition yourself to wrestling is just wrestling. Um, that's why you, you do the same preparation. You do the same pre-match routine. Uh, you don't change it up. Your mindset stays the same. Um, that, that's, that's really it. Um, uh, the, one of the best advice I got before the national tournament was these next two weeks, because, you know, uh, in college it was the conferences, and then you had like a week or two yes. where there was no matches. And I remember my coach just saying, other people are trading their, their, their butts off right now. You, you just let that money cash out. Because oh, I've been working hard for – my whole life. Well, that for college, four years. So I was doing everything right for those four years. So it was time for me to just do what got me there. You know, right? You saying that right. So my buddy played in the NFL. He did nine and a half seasons. And uh, one of the guys on his team, 
on Sundays, who would always say, the hay is in the barn. <laughs> yeah. And what he's saying is like, we're now we get to perform. We've done the right. work. And I've been around athletes at all levels, whether it's been at the division one level, um, high school level, uh, you know, high school and division one primarily where before the big event, they try ramping it up in two weeks, dude, in two weeks, we're not going to really make a change to your physical performance. Get stronger in two weeks. You're probably not getting stronger in two weeks if you're a high level athlete already. Um, and so you did not stay consistent enough with a routine of showing up for strength and sport performance work. And now we're going to cram it in. That's what that is. We call that desperation. You're trying to do in two weeks what you should have done for two years, you know? And so these national and state titles are not won that day, that weekend. They've been won with the 15 to 20 years right. of work that led up to them. And so hearing these things is like the routine is, even though we're focusing on a pre-match routine, you need kind of this, you need the hay to be in the barn. You need, yeah, you need the hay to be in the barn. And yep. even if the hay is in the barn, you got to let it, you, you know, I like using money in the bank, you know. Um, it's time for you to cash that money out because what's the point of putting all that hard work, all that practice in, countless hours of training, is if it, in that match you're not going to let it out. You're not going to cash it out. got to open let it up, up the throttle yeah. and you got to – you know what I tell my daughter? Um, I, I can't recall what I would say to her specifically years ago, but I think um, – and I'm – kind of drawing a blank of who told this to me, but I don't tell her, go win, go beat this person. I say, uh, have fun, score points, have fun, which score is points. weird yeah. for me. Like I love to win. I want to win, whether it's my business, whether it's the kids that were training, <clears throat> but I tell her, Hey, you know, have fun and score points. And if you do those things and you're working, I feel like the score will take care of itself. But um, of course, I give her these little like mental nuggets of things. Um, let's. This is, these are uh, some good questions. What if I feel I'm not progressing enough? But my coaches are saying I'm looking good. So I like that. that that's, that's a good, good question. question. Um, yep. You got to have an open dialogue with your coaches, with coaches and parents, right? Uh, address to them what what is helping you out and what's not helping you. I remember my coach. He used to always say, oh, man, you got that number two ranked kid in the nation. You better be ready. I'm like, I'm always ready. Like, why does it matter if I'm wrestling a number two ranked kid or not? So I tell him, bro. I was like, I know he's, he was going to tell me anyway. So I just prepared my mind like, all right, whatever. Yeah. He's ranked. I should be ranked too. I'm good enough where I should be ranked. Even though I never really cared about the rankings, I just knew my work was ready. But, you know, how do you know you're, pro you're not, if you're progressing? So set, set up like short-term goals for yourself. Um, Maybe if uh, there's a guy in the practice room that you know beat you, right? Maybe challenge him to a best of five mm -hmm. every week. Maybe make it a make it a habit where you wrestle him every Wednesday you know, and see if you improve. You know why that's so good, Ray? Is because you have to learn to compete. So mm -hmm. I think to myself in high school wrestling, I had two off-season tournaments. There were very few off-season tournament opportunities, whereas my younger brother – I always remember it was like the end of summer and he said, he's like, Zach, I think I've already wrestled 200 matches. And so he was able to build a routine. He was able to experiment. He had less stress with competition. Whereas somebody my age, we didn't have enough competition. And so our experience competing was minuscule. Even our uh, dual meets, we had one try meet a year. And then you had like one or two duels. Whereas these kids are maybe having practice twice, maybe three days a week because they wrestle so much. And then maybe for um, this athlete here, he's saying, my coaches keep saying I'm looking good. Sometimes coaches are finding a way to just build you up with positivity because honestly, some kids take it, they are sensitive to any kind of feedback where maybe, you know, a coach says to somebody, look, you know, for me, it's with strength and conditioning technique. I'll tell a kid, you got to squat lower. That's that. We cannot count that, that 405 squat. You're squatting halfway down. If I drive halfway to work, I didn't get there. You squat halfway down, it's a zero rep. Now that kid has really taken it a bit um, personally, 
where sometimes a coach has to be tough on you. And look, then sometimes I got to flip it and say, hey, man, I like how you're squatting. I know it's not as heavy as you want to be, but that's looking good. And so sometimes coaches are learning different ways to communicate with the kids of today because anybody, I'm 45. So anybody who's in that age 40, late 30s, coaches back then just said, you know, do this, do that, shut up, get tough. It was so like point right. blank. We couldn't question anything. Right. So yeah. Have that, be honest with your coach. Say coach, yes. really? like, let me know. <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's, it, it happens. Cause as a, as a coach, it's like you deal with so many athletes and um, you know, you, you want to kind of have your own way, but if, if you're showing them that you care, right. And, and you want to get better, a coach is supposed to be there to make you better. They so will, if you have an open dialogue, yeah. they, they'll be they'll be willing to work with you. And they'll, you know, they'll break down your matches and see where you're struggling. Right. And, you know, I saw my coach at the high school, you know, he was watching a match and I saw the notes, 25 second mark, this position, 55 second mark, you know, this position. So he had his notes ready to meet with the wrestler. Um, you got a, a note here from uh, John saying, I'm not a wrestler. I'm a basketball coach. Your advice is excellent for all sports. Right. He's a hundred percent correct because um, my daughter plays tennis. My son plays baseball. Uh, we got some swimmers here. He's got like this thing where he like slaps his leg before he goes out and swims. Mm-hmm. He's got a specific routine, right. which makes him uh, more confident, less stressed, allows him to swim at his best. And also he believes in his preparation. I think, that's one of the biggest, we call it transfer of training. When a coach is trying to figure out, all right, why do we squat? Why do we bench press? What does it do for sport? And sometimes the thing that is not addressed, it, they're looking, is he, does he get faster in this plane of motion? How about the kid gets more confident? Yeah. What's right. more, what is more dangerous than an athlete who believes in him or herself? That is the ultimate advantage. Mm-hmm. And look, sometimes you have a, a kid who believes in himself, who maybe doesn't do the work, but he's kind of like crazy, just believes in himself, yeah. has confidence. Black belt and crazy. <laughs> yeah, black belt and crazy. Those, um, I, I had a teammate like that. He was kind of like crazy. He believed in himself so much that he went from a guy that didn't make it out of the districts to a state place winner the next year. And he and he didn't even wrestle in the off season. Yeah. He just believed in himself. And that just goes not even for sports, but for a career, for your job, right? You've got to believe in. Especially that job. And they're, they're going to want someone that's confident over, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Somebody that could look people in the eye, that has thorough answers and everything. You know, I remember Coach Goody was invited to speak to Rutgers football before when I was there. So um, I, I can't remember the name of the coach, but they were, they were not doing well. And I said, Coach Goody, what did you talk to them about? He goes, I spoke to them about preparation. Everything comes down to preparation. And um, there was a video of him in the, this like preseason or the beginning of the season where he said to the guys, we're giving you the weekend off, but if you sit on this whole weekend and don't do anything, it's very hard to get better. So you right. got to do something on your own. And it's being honest with yourself too. So uh, Self-honesty is huge. This How do you is- not let fear take over you? So I – I, I talked about this before, like building your case of why you deserve to, you know, win or why you deserve your goal. But fear, right? Um, the, the, you know, fear is the number one thing that holds a lot of people back. Um, yeah. But fear and just nerves, it just means that you care, right? If you didn't care, you know, it, we get okay. it, you know, it just means you care. So maybe you redirect that fear or maybe you label it something else, right? I'm not, I'm not nervous about it. This is just like, my fuel i'm ready to go i, I like care that. i care about this that i care about what i'm doing mm-hmm. so maybe, maybe that will help um maybe if it's a negative thought like i said take that sometimes I'll take that thought throw it away replace it with three of the things that i had on my confidence sheet that i made um and build it every day maybe there's something like zach would say oh man uh you sled push that like an animal i'll, I'll write that down like, oh man i pushed i pushed 300 pounds on the sled today write that down those little things uh, maybe you did something really good in, in class, write it down. Maybe someone complimented your outfit and you felt like the man that day, write it down. So when you feel low, you have those things where it's like, okay, here, here I have it. You know, um, you're giving yourself permission to be confident right. and strong right. because uh, there's, you know, certainly there's differences in a wrestler or any athlete 
somebody's more skilled, somebody's maybe more genetically gifted, tall or stronger, this and that. But I've seen a lot of the highly talented get beat by the workers. And the workers, why do they believe that they could win? They've, they've done the work. And so I think that work starts to defeat. It starts to beat up the fear and starts to say, you have no room in my mind or in my heart. And um, having a little bit of nerves is good. I think being afraid, if we're looking at it like really dialed in, our freshman football team was very small, very undersized. And the coach told me um, during halftime, a kid mm -hmm. said, coach, I'm afraid to go out. I'm not going out. And I said, that's not good. We have kids that are afraid. Why are they afraid? It's just a game. It's just a competition. Well, <laughs> they're going against kids who are right. big. Mm -hmm. So I said, dude, they're, they didn't, weren't exposed to doing things that built that right. strength, that mm -hmm. inner strength. And so what we started doing was they, he started sending freshman football to the weight room every day, mm -hmm. which normally was like a once or twice a week in season thing every day. And I did nothing complicated with them. I did things like uh, farmer walks, pull-ups, push-ups, dumbbell bench, uh, dumbbell goblet squat. Then at the end, we always had a closeout where I thought to myself, build their mind inch by inch, brick by brick. I'm like, I love what I'm seeing. You guys are getting stronger, faster, tougher. Oh, you know, Ray Jazz said he's eating eggs for breakfast. That's what I want. That's how you get better. So I was building their confidence. So, you know, if I wasn't there, then it would really be up to them to find, it's kind of like an opportunity to do work. To, to me, you know, these um, sometimes self-limiting thoughts happen if we haven't done the correct work or we're not experiencing success. And you've got to, you've got to celebrate every victory. So like you said, if you're afraid, well, when does the fear come? Are you afraid when you have to start neutral? Are you afraid when somebody takes top? Write those things down and address, and address them in practice. Right. Do it a little bit early. Stay a little bit later with the coach. And here's another thing, Ray, that's interesting. Now there's so much free information. What if you just study some stuff and visualize? So, for example, if I wanted information back then, I had Dan Gable Competitor Supreme on VHS. Um, now a kid could go on YouTube and study, you know, there's videos of like, you like to watch Gable Stevenson. There's highlight videos of him. There's instructional videos all over YouTube. You could study those things and shadow wrestle. You know how I wrestled a lot. I wrestled my brother in the living room on the carpet or in the backyard. And so we kind of created these <clears throat> opportunities to get better versus waiting for opportunity. So that's a, a great question by Elizabeth. I'm yeah. not sure. Another thing with fear too is perspective. Um, one example I used was uh, I always use Anthony Robles. He won a national title with no legs. So one it's leg. like, yep. It, yeah. That, wait, was it one leg or no leg? One leg. One leg. One, one leg. leg. Yep. He won it with like, so if he won it on one leg, what is your excuse? Why are you afraid to go out and wrestle this, this guy he right here? Beast. Um, another thing, you know, with fear, um, you know, like, like, I, like I was saying before, right? With perspective and why do we do this? Why do we work hard in practice, right? If you're not, if you're going to go on that match and just, just be afraid, right? So just yeah. remember why you're doing the work in the first place. Right. I yeah. like that. Like why are you doing And uh, look, wrestling is, there's fear involved in the beginning. Yeah. So the more you compete, the more this becomes kind of like your natural environment. And so you have to be a competitor in the practice room. And what's the worst that happens? You lose, whatever. Your coaches are still going to coach you. Yep. Your, your parents, parents are still going to love they you. They still love you. And, and that's it. You, you still know? got your friends. You still have your friends. Your friends aren't going to be with you because you're not a state champion. I said you know? it to, uh, I say this to my son. I go, Ethan, guess what happens in baseball? You're going to strike out. You will you can't hit it all the time. Right. You know, um, I said it to the, to the wrestlers. I go, guys, if you're on the wrestling team, you will lose. Nice. Unless you have an undefeated season and, you know, win. But eventually, you're gonna lose. You're gonna you're gonna have that. And but that's exciting. Like the when you came into this group, um, one of the kids has three dual meets coming up, all very tough teams. And I was like, that's awesome. That's mm -hmm. what you get excited for. You've got tough competition. Uh, what's exciting about like you know you're wrestling a team that's 
you know, notoriously <laughs> not good. Yeah, it's, you know? um, yeah. So you want the chat, the beauty is in the challenge. And so I think you got to kind of reverse the yeah. way you look at it. The more you it. seek out the best competition, the more, the more it's just going to be, that's it, competition, right? Because at the end of the day, that's, that's what it is. You don't get nervous when you play your friends in Madden or you don't get nervous when you play your friends in Cornhole, right? It's, con it's competition. I understand you put, you know, countless hours in it, but you got to treat it like competition. You got to seek out the best because if you want to be the best, right, you got to beat the best. So yeah, get, get over the fear of wrestling your own teammate. Oh, this is a good one, especially wrestle offs. And uh, yeah, wow. yeah. Wrestle offs in, in your own tournaments. We I get, had to we wrestle get a lot. off. All um, the time. I had to wrestle off to make the freshman team. Right. That's actually a really good question because man, sometimes those wrestle offs where you're more nervous about that than, than the own national tournament or the state tournament because if you lose that wrestle off you don't even have a chance to do that um the best thing with that is uh man because this is a little bit hard because i know um when you're doing wrestle offs it's like it's hard because sometimes those guys are your drill partners yeah you um, I, I watched uh you know my first year at rutgers a kid who was normally starting uh wrestled off a kid for the national tournament who barely ever started and the kid who barely ever started won, you know? And so like, if we put it out on paper, the kid who won the wrestle off didn't quote unquote deserve to win, should not have won, but he won, you know, he got, I can't remember if it was overtime and man, it, it was heartbreaking. And the kid who lost the next day, he was back in the practice room on the treadmill, helping his teammates lose weight. Like he went right back to work and became, right. and just said, I'm going to be a great teammate, but I, I've been in this. And I think, I think Gene and Gene and Jeff actually wrestled each other off. They're brothers. What they year? Don't know wrestle my Gene and Jeff wrestled each other off. I forgot what year it is. That's great. I think they should talk about. It. We'll make it. We'll make a video soon on that. I think that's a good one. Uh, I'll tell Gene. We'll make a video specifically on wrestle offs and uh, you know wrestling your teammates in tournaments. That's a good one. Uh, whoever asked that, we'll, we'll make we'll make our, our own video about that because you know everyone has their own ways of dealing with that. But I think Gene and Jeff. You know, if they make their own, because they, they're brothers. They're brothers right. and they wrestled. They wrestled. I would, I would yeah. say if you're in the tournament, I, I look back and I was, was very life or death when I right. wrestled. So serious. I mean, yeah. I think you got to get back to having fun. I think having, of like yeah, well, Darren Caldwell, when he wrestled, when he wrestled uh, Brent Metcalf, like he's throwing headlocks. You know, he's, <laughs> he was going, he's doing yeah. crazy he was things having fun, yeah. that they tell you don't do. And so... I think that if you take it too serious, you freeze up, you can't perform at your best. You also like, you feel like you have what's called a nervous system dump. Like in 30 seconds, you're like, Ugh, cause you took it too serious. You didn't just let it fly and trust your training. And that's one of the elements. So we have the, the pre-match routine checklist and I'm, I'm gonna rally it off. And only you guys really know how your body works, right? Um, I'm just going to give you examples of what I used to do and Zach's going to give you examples too, but all the elements are basically all the same. So you have, I'm just going to rally it off and then we're going to go in depth about it. Uh, dynamic stretching, right? It's not like static where you just touch your toes. It's actually getting the body moving. So it's like, you know, getting these kickers in, um, you're getting, getting your getting body muscle, hyped up, getting your body ready. Um, an element of fun, which is what we talked about what we're called. Well, right. You know, competing is fun. I wish I could go back and wrestle, a wrestle a tournament again. Um, but it is, it's fun, right? Wrestling's fun. And you need an element uh, just to tell your, tell your mind that this is fun. Um, I used to have like a hacky sack. I used to just mess around with, I used to throw it at my coach. He used to get all mad at me, but it was just that little element of fun yeah. that, that just redirected my focus. Sometimes it was just messing around with my teammate or joking around. Right. But when it was time to get, on, when it was time to get on the mat, I was serious, but you know, those tournaments are long. And if you're serious, that whole tournament, it drains that batter. You, you it drains your battery life. So. And emotional fatigue will uh, suck out more physical fatigue. It's, right. it's all kind of like a one bucket. And so you're right. You will drain your battery. Right. So having fun. I mean, I remember my coach telling me about a guy who would like bang his head before the match against the, against the cement wall. And it's so interesting how decades ago we thought that that was the, you had to be like a, you know, kill or be killed type guy. But some of the best wrestlers I know, like uh, I remember at Rutgers, um, Gravina, Nick Gravina. I used to watch him wrestle before I was at Rutgers. 
and he'd be like, he was like crazy. Then I met him and I said, Nick, I wouldn't even hire you to babysit my kids. They would destroy you. <laughs> like you're the biggest sweetheart of a guy, you know? But he knew how to like, he, he was- Flip the switch. He flipped the switch. Flip the switch. And I think that was like, an act. It was almost like an alter ego slash act. And that's him. what we have. That's one of our mindset lessons is that alter ego flipping the switch. So, you know, you have that element of fun, but once you get on it, and that's that's part of the pre-match routine, something that you do before you step on the mat to flip the switch. Um, I don't know if you can see my feet. It's funny. Um, some people, before they would shake hands, right, they would stop their feet. Right? Yes, yes. Some people would just do a flat. I know one of my athletes, they rub their hands. Like, like it's time for business. Nice. They would shake their hand. That's um, good. Okay. Maybe it was the double, you know, double clean up here. Yeah. All right, come right. Let's go time. Let's go. Something like that. You um, do that before, like, before uh, your match. And that, that's do that it. before a job interview. Do that before a job interview, right? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> the guy so, the so, something like that. Like something that you know that can flip a switch. Um, maybe if a ref makes a bad call, right? Okay. All right. That's all right. Ref makes yep. a bad call. Wash them off. That's like all right. That. Uh, just we call that a confidence anchor. So if you guys could just find that. And like I said, I, I'm just showing you examples I use. Uh, you could use mine or you could, you know, some, sometimes stuff works better for other people. Um, I like it. Uh, yeah, that's one of the big things we have on here. Another one is, um, you know, deep breathing, making sure you're in that present moment, right? You can't wrestle that finals match unless you compete in the morning, unless you wrestle in, in the, the quarterfinals, unless you wrestle in the semis. You got to take it match by match, moment by moment. And that's why deep breathing helps too. Sometimes you get so amped up. Um, sometimes do... just spend like maybe even just two minutes on the side away from the wrestling room, away from the competition, right, maybe right. In the locker room, just to get your mind away from that. There's a you couple know, ways breathing. to do that, Ray. So yeah. there's something called box breathing that I learned from Mark Devine. Um, <clears throat> he's a uh, former Navy SEAL. And box breathing was simple. It was like inhale for four through the nose, hold for four, exhale for four. So it was like the same you know, time, then you could go to five seconds, eight right. seconds. But, uh, you know, uh, I remember um, like doing it when I was on an airplane going through like crazy turbulence. I just did box breathing and calmed myself right. down and controlled myself. Then you have the other option where you could do like quick shallow breathing. Like, you know, you could kind of get yourself like hyped up. You can literally calm or elevate your body um, within a matter of like five, eight, 10 seconds. And uh, the, the breathing is like, goes back to a lot of these ancient warriors. I remember being at uh, Blair in the early like years where Buxton brought me in. And after we had like done all this hard work, I was like, inhale deep through the nose, hold, exhale. I was like, deep breathing is what a lot of the ancient gladiators were doing. And I can't remember, maybe I read something, maybe I made it up for them, I can't remember. <laughs> but Buxton told me the next day when they were done live wrestling, like one of the kids was like, we are the, like, the ancient gladiators, only breathe in through your nose. And it's interesting, here we are now, 2021, there's so much stuff about breathing and how it can um, impact the body. And so I'll use it as a way to uh, calm down at night, calm down, fall asleep, take, you know, inhale, good thoughts, exhale, like, you know, any stress. Right. And you're, only, you're only thinking about breathing, that's it. Yeah, right? kind of like calming the whole body down. It's, it's uh, important. You, you mentioned something earlier, Ray, about like, hey, you know your body. Well, some of these younger wrestlers, freshmen, don't, yeah, right? you don't know crap. <laughs> <laughs> you're like figuring everything you're out. Figuring out. You're um, first year in high school, your hormones yeah. are, are going. And so for those kids, I think, you know, go, I'm harping on it, but I love just kind of going back, having fun and hey, man, use, use what you've learned in practice, take it and apply it. If somebody scores on you, that's over. Score back on them. Just have fun with it. Yeah, just love to compete. That's what it's about. Love to be a competitor. So that's what wrestling is. And like I said, you know, knowing your body, definitely have these elements. So I'm going to rally the, the elements we have that makes, you know, a solid three-match routine. Make sure you write it. And then, fit, like I said, uh, write it and know what your body needs. So, you know, like I said, dynamic stretching, element of fun, deep breathing, Drilling and hand fighting. I love this. And this one is very, very important. You don't want, like, I understand you guys, everyone has their own team warm ups, right? You know, they all do different things, but your pre match, right? Maybe you're on double deck or triple deck, quadruple deck. 
Don't let the first time you get your hands on someone be when that whistle blows. Do it right. Get this. Um, yeah, we were speaking yeah. about this before we recorded. So um, <clears throat> another another thing too is drill your best stuff. So uh, I think it was right after dynamic stretching. I would always make sure I hit my number one takedown five times, my number two takedown five times, my number three takedown five times. Then I would do my number one setup to a shot five times, my number two setup whatever five times, my number yep. three setup five times, and then I would do defense. Um, and then after that, that was like part of my pre-match routine. And then like a, uh, on deck or double deck, I would literally just grab a coach and just get to my get to my tie-ups, right? Boom. I'll just, you know, get a rush. And okay, yep. we'll fly it up, I'll get another one. Boom, rush, and even yeah. something just simple like it this. It almost looks like I'm you're not dancing. Going, yeah, it I'm looks not, like yeah. you're just dancing yeah. and you're doing light yeah. drilling. For me, being having not a lot of competitive experience in the off season, I remember my freshman year, I thought I had to stay calm. I remember telling my older brother, who was kind of like a wild, you know, he would get into fights with kids. I was like, I think I'm not mean, and I think I'm just going to sit and relax, because there was a kid on our team who was successful, who would do that. Sophomore year, I remember like pacing and going into the bathroom and getting psyched up. The success didn't really start happening until I began drilling before matches. And it took me a while to learn it because the summer after freshman year, I went to a John Smith intensive camp and John Smith said, before you have your match, you should be drilling. Your high crotch and low single. I can't remember how many times, but he said he wrestled a full match with his brother before he won the gold medal match, his first gold medal in the Olympics. And so I'd get my training partner and I started warming up, you know, talking about a ritual. If I was wrestling at 52, I remember like five weight classes, four weight classes. I didn't, you know, our coaches said two or three matches. I felt like it was too short. So I went four or five weight classes and it was like each time the next way went up, I got to this next part of kind of like your, um, I did some moving dynamic stretching. I didn't have any fun. So that was a negative. I don't think I knew anything about breathing, but then like two to three matches beforehand, I would drill a lot of low single, low single, left, right, left, right. Then circle, finish, circle, finish, um, high crotch, high crotch. So as soon as somebody shook hands with me and that whistle went, bang, I was in on the legs. I was so nervous that the drilling helped calm me down. Um, I So you've got three, four, five things here, Ray. I mm. probably did two out of five, which is a 33%. Yeah. That's not good. Well, they could be like, in a, like the hand fighting sometimes. I would go with like Big Bruce, my head coach, yep. or Gene, and that was even just an element of fun because I was just messing around with my right. coach. Yeah, right? get you oh, relaxed. That's right. right. Yeah. I think that is. I think that's great yeah. for for me. I was so serious, and I still, you right. know, when I watch kids, they are they're they're so serious, and uh, sometimes there's a disconnect because what if you're always having fun in practice? Right. Now it's match time. You're like, oh, I'm a monster right. now. Yeah. You're totally opposite of who you really are. Right. And that goes into, you know, treating practice and trying to dictate it as much as a match, right? And the match should try to dictate a practice. Because how many times has, has a wrestler been a practice room player, right? Oh, man, I, if, this match, all the time. if this match was in the practice room, I definitely yeah. would have won. Well, if you wrestle good in practice, why not try to make that match, right? Try to dictate a, a practice as much as you can, right? You do, you know, you do your warm-ups in practice. Then you do some drilling, yep. right? And then maybe a little bit of conditioning and then you go live, right? So that match, right? You shouldn't just take it easy in, in that warm up, right? Really treat that warm up like in practice. So it should, you know? it should feel the same. Hopefully mm -hmm. there's a lot of coaches watching this so they can plug and play this right. in because I think a lot of high school kids, unless they're <clears throat> doing a lot of off season wrestling, they're lost <clears throat> with this stuff. They don't know how to have a, you know, make practice feel competitive. So when right. they do compete, it's the, it's the same. Yeah. Even if it's just like on Wednesday, some, some, every Wednesday I would wear a singlet for, for live goats, ah. a singlet, I would wear a singlet, have my headgear and yeah. I'd do my, my pre-match routine before live goes and I would do it. You know um, and then even like we were discussing in the beginning, sometimes I would dictate, I think it was like a, Tuesdays, I would have a match with one of my teammates and I would make someone record. I'd bring it, I'd bring a singlet. I'd do my pre-match routine and I would have a match. 
And I would, I would make money. You did that in college? You did that in college. Well, of course, yeah. you, you had learned. And ironically, yeah. I saw Coach Tom Ryan of Ohio State doing that during a practice. You know, singlets on, uh, and they started wrestling. And now I actually didn't put two and two together. Yeah is he's getting you used to condition to competing for that condition yeah. to competing. And, um, you know, at one of the colleges that I was at, I remember the coach saying, we're looking for guys who love to compete. So when we're recruiting guys, we need somebody who loves to compete, who's not afraid of being unseated. So I think, uh, you know, of course the national, the division one nationals just ended and there was like, I can't remember which weight class it was, but it was like a 20th seed beat the third right. or the fourth seed yeah. and then became an All-American. Uh, you have uh, John Posnanski from Rutgers, who I don't know where he was ranked. He's only had five dual meets this year. Um, I think, he, you know, he started like right. the 25th and boom, kept going. But he loves to compete. He wasn't... Right. You know, like, he wasn't focused on the rankings, right? He was just focused yeah. on competing. He wasn't like, Winning oh, my God, position. I'm wrestling a kid from this big school or that big school, and I guarantee you the kid trusts his preparation, and uh, he has fun when he competes. You could, you could tell, like, he's just doing stuff. It's like, man, but also when I see that, I just see somebody who has done the work and has had – a lot of uh, support along the way. Like I always say, the most successful athletes oftentimes have super supportive parents and they've just taken them to the right places and helped them get to the right opportunities. And it's a lot more, wrestling is a lot more, you know, enjoyable when you actually enjoy it and you're actually having fun. Uh, sometimes when it becomes a job or a, a, a struggle that, you know, once the season ends, it's like you're burnt out. No, like it should have been, it was a fun season. You should enjoy it. You should it's enjoy fun. the moment. Because it's, it's not forever. It doesn't last forever. I so, learned to as, enjoy it. as a strength coach to not, I, I, I don't know when I started kind of coming up with this, but it probably happened by the time I got to Rutgers. Maybe not as much as when I was at Lehigh, but I was always like, I want to make this like a weightlifting party. So the music's pumping, we're working. But like you could talk, laugh, joke around a little bit. And I've even loosened up the reins more with like, hey, whoever does the best on the sleds gets to pick the next three songs or whatever. So turning it in, into, you know, kind of gamifying everything in a competitive way and sometimes competing out of the blue. Right, so yeah. I'll say uh, it's Wacky Wednesday. You guys create the warm up. Then somebody will be like, okay, sled races. Right. Yeah. Oh, change oh, it up. I'm not, I'm not right? ready for the sled race. Why aren't we ready? Like, right. yeah, we've been that, doing all another time. example, one of the wrestlers, um, he he thought he was gonna wrestle someone and he was gearing up for it, and then they bumped someone up. Right? You gotta be ready for anything. And I yeah. expect the unexpected. That's why that, that pre-match routine stays the same. Because it, it shouldn't matter who you're wrestling and your mind should just always be the same. Because yeah. it could especially do means anything can switch up oh my god i'm, I'm bumping oh up god. so what yeah. it's 10 pounds heavier the world's not gonna end right um let's see let's answer some questions i think we've oh another thing i wanted to cover right and that explains um we have something called a shotgun routine where um sometimes pins happen sometimes bout numbers get screwed up especially those those elementary school tournaments middle school tournaments where you know it's sometimes oh, yeah. get a little oh, I'm, I'm right? now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, um the good. way we set this up is think about if you roll out of bed you're already in your shoes. Don't worry about tying your shoes. You're rolling out of bed. You have two minutes to warm up for your match. Right? Yeah. What are you telling yourself and how are you getting ready? Um, for me, maybe it's a quick jump rope, right? I always, I even jump rope to this day. Jump rope, what am I telling my mind? All right, I have the best double leg in the state of New Jersey. All right, uh, I'm the strongest wrestler here. I don't get tired. Boom. Maybe I'll do some hard hand fighting with someone real quick. All right, right, you're up. Let's go. Okay, here we go. I'm doing my, I'm doing my, my claps. I'm shaking his hand. I'm ready to go. So come up with a shotgun routine. Um, something that you can tell yourself. If I were to roll out of bed, how can I get ready for this match? Yeah, that's fun, um, man. Yeah, that that's a good happens. Yeah, it happens. And especially yeah. the, the rec tournaments because they just bounce around. It can take yeah. forever. So, it's wild. you know, really think of a shotgun routine. And that's, that's kind of the last thing we kind of cover with the pre-match routine. But, you know, like I said, these elements and – you really want to know, um, especially the best way to think about what thoughts and feelings you want to have. Number one, don't worry about feelings. Like, I, 
as a coach or when coaches would ask me, oh, how are you feeling? It doesn't matter how you feel. Your opponent doesn't care how you feel, right? You can feel like crap and still wrestle great. Um, don't worry about feelings too much. Tell yourself you're ready, even though I'm, you're not. I'm careful with asking. I could kind of see how they're moving, right. but if somebody's not moving good, I don't want to say, hey, how you feel? Right. Now we get into the conversation of this person right. talking about how bad they feel. Right. I always say to them, what if I'm tired? Do you care if I'm tired? Do you want me to give you 50% right. as yeah. a coach? And so uh, oftentimes the way to get out of that tired feeling is movement. movement. Move your body. Movement is going to get you feeling better. So I remember um, I, I remember all these like little nuances. I remember at Lehigh once we're going through a training session. And I just felt like the energy was a little like, eh. So then I said, okay, I'm going to teach you guys something called running the rack with dumbbell curls. So I was like, you pick a weight, you do three reps, then you go up maybe three times, then go back down. Guys were like curling hundreds. And I, <laughs> I remember after they had so much fun. And then I, I said to Coach Santoro, I was like, man, team morale was low until we started curling. Right. And why? Because of the blood pumping and it releases endorphins. Right. So then I remember at Rutgers, if the guys look tired, I didn't drag on a gymnastics warm up and all these diving. I took them in and did like a bodybuilding pump up. So I was like, do 15 reps, dumbbell bench, do 15 curls, do 15 push downs, do 15 face pulls. I got their blood pumping with a bodybuilding warm up. They forgot that they're tired. Then I was able to work and maybe modify, of course, the intensity a little bit. But if you're feeling a little like eh, movement is the best way to get your body feeling better. Movement and like I said, remember how you felt during those best matches and try to dictate it, right? I felt loose and relaxed, right? One of my coaches said, loose as a goose, as serious as a heart attack, right? So yeah. sometimes you'll fake it till you make it. But yeah, don't don't spend too much time getting, oh, I feel like crap. Just when you step on that line, boom, get your confidence anchor in there, shake his hand, and that's it. You let it all out. Have so, fun. Yeah, let's look at some questions now. I think, I think those are the five we answered Let's see here. what we got. Some people want T-shirts on Instagram. T-shirts. That's all people care about nowadays. Free gear. Free. Got to earn it. <laughs> Run a mile in under six minutes. Then we'll talk. Wrestling never ends. Uh, no one has questions. Come on. Freestyle in Oklahoma. I like when coaches have questions. I think it's coaches, athletes, digging. That in. is a whole thing. Someone asked about a shirt. <laughs> yep. Uh, I think what we hammered home today was about we you know, preparation. Tips on being on the attack in matches. So, um, like I said, know your go-tos, right? Know your go-tos. A lot of wrestlers mistake being aggressive with just hand, like, just, ah. Uh, yeah. no. Aggressive wrestling is just being stubborn to your tie-ups. Just getting to your rush no matter what. All right, he fights out, right? I'm going to go to my, my underhook. Boom, he fights out of my underhook. Boom, I'm going to my rush. That's wrestling aggressive. Uh, a lot of times wrestlers mistake being aggressive with just, oh, I'm just going to go on his oh, head. Yeah. Slamming no, on the head. No, that's not wrestling. You're not actually achieving anything. And here's right. the other thing is um, don't expect to do it in a match if you're not doing it when you drill and practice. Right. And so when a kid says, I got to work on my conditioning here, I tell them your best conditioning is hard wrestling. Right. You, you've got to be willing to put in your practice has to be hard. So, um, if you drill hard, that's your best conditioning. If you go hard in practice, it feels normal to go hard in a match. But if you're slacking, and again, I don't think people here are slacking, but let's say you're a coach watching this. This is a message you would share with your wrestlers. If you're, if you're half-assing it in practice, you're not going to be able to, uh, you know, you need what we need. And my buddy Donnie uh, DeFilippis shares this with me. Um, he owns Yale Street Wrestling Club. He talks about like these guys in the NFL, what they often share the best thing they did. And he sent me a message of a guy who just retired in the NFL. Same thing. He goes, the most important thing for me was not the Super Bowl that I won. It's being a great teammate. And, and my teammates feeling confident and believing that it's great that I've got this guy next to me or backing me up. And I think that was I've never really heard those things. So you always mention, right? Try being a great wrestler alone. Try just drilling alone and becoming yeah. great. If you you're a great, awesome. if you are a great teammate, um, you will become a great individual. Right. And it goes down to drilling. Like um, 
attack the way you want to attack in drilling like you would in matches. So, you know how some wrestlers, you know, they'll get their double leg on someone. They won't even get there too. They'll just let the guy stand up, blah, blah, blah. No, get your takedown, right? Go to your turn on top or go to your, go to your hold on top and make him earn the takedown or make him earn the escape. Yeah. Knee slide, stand up, cut, and now it's his turn. Make him earn the escape. If you want to get good on bottom, that's what you have to do. You have to drill like that. Have your partner high crotch. All right, tight waist me chop. All right, now I have to work up. I love that. Bam, we did go. that when we ran the uh, first Spartan yeah. wrestling camp. Yeah. And Coach Rob Cole did a hands-on drill. Keep the hand. That's why your, people hated drill with me in college. Your That's hand never leaves yeah. the guy. And it, like, intensified the drilling to, you know, 20, 20 X. It was, uh, oh, another question popped in uh, from Anonymous. 21 year combat veteran trained over a thousand troops. And the philosophy was always train as you fight, fight as you, you train. Yeah. You're um, what's that other saying is like, you don't rise to the occasion. You fall to the level of your preparation. And that's what we've been hammering. It's what I've been hammering so much. Like I, I just, I, I hate to say it, but sometimes I'll train a kid all off season. Then he stops training in season and it's those little nuances of, do you squat low enough? Do you squat at all? What does your in-season program look like? And so those details either, you know, help or hinder you. And it's, you know, at the biggest matches, you know, these like the, the finals of a tournament, things happen in overtime or by one point. You go to the States, you, everywhere you look is an overtime match or a one point swing match back and forth. And, um, the details have added up either in a good way or you've subtracted them in a negative way. Hey, I think one of the questions was how, how, how many times as I think as a nine-year-old, should you practice your pre-match routine? Uh, first, write it down, write it down, go through it. Um, sometimes two, three times a week. Uh, if you have a match, that's when you would do it during your yeah. match. If you don't have a match, do it during practice before a live go. Another one is best way to transition from high school to college wrestling. Um, watching a lot of college wrestling, uh, seeing, seeing the college technique, um, wrestling college guys, go to a club where there's college guy. Yep. Uh, getting good on top, getting good on top. You have to be good at wrestler on top to wrestle in college. Uh, that the one thing that gets me mad about Jersey wrestling is these refs do not let anyone wrestle on top. They're constantly hitting from stalling and everything. Uh, if you're a good top wrestler, you could, you could ride on top in Jersey. If you got to get to that angle, keep the positioning. Um, I know it can be frustrating to wrestle on top because you don't know what the ref's going to call in high school, but really get good on top. Make it a, make it a thing. Cause that, that, that riding time point is, is, is huge. Um, that riding time point is huge. And I, I won a lot of matches in college. I, I, I always say, man, <laughs> I wish I like really focused on learning legs that we just didn't have, you know, somebody like me opportunity wise, you know, the opportunities weren't there to learn year round. And so if you're a great top wrestler, that's where you're scoring all those right. points. Yeah, and, and it drains people. How, there's it's nothing deep. more frustrating than you finally work your way up and someone just, boom, picks you up, boom, brings you back it's down. emotionally it, oh, it, that's, and physically, yeah. it breaks right. people. Is a 2K run twice a week uh, and sprints enough for cardio for wrestling. The best wrestling cardio is wrestling. And I think <laughs> if you're, you don't want to add conditioning on top of conditioning. What you want to focus on is kind of what we do is strength development, power development, strength, endurance, muscular endurance. And if you're wrestling hard, you're going to have great wrestling shape. Sprinting is great. I love hill sprints for power development. And um, what else was I going to say? In the off season, you're not going to be in great wrestling shape because you're not wrestling six days a week. So be okay with in the off season, you're not going to be at your best. You want to be, you know, in the off season is a time to work on wrestling skills and this whole kind of, when I say strength and conditioning, that's a big umbrella term, but we're working on increasing your capabilities physically and, and also by training you build confidence in your preparation. I've been hammering that the whole time, but I think how much confidence can a kid have if he's not doing the right training? Oh, I'm just, I'm on my own program. I'm doing the, you know, I thought that 
with all the free information on the internet, kids would know better, but they're watching, you know, their favorite Instagram hero, which that person might not have good knowledge of strength and conditioning. And so you need, you know, the proper, the proper training. So I think too much running, especially in the off season, um, can beat up the body. I'd, right. I'd like to see kind of other training methods than running. This one, this one would be good for you, Zach. Best tips for training unathletic kids and improving their athleticism. That's a great question. I think that you have to take them outside of the weight room. And so I look at the days when I had the, the wrestlers training out of my garage, we would do things at the uh, local playground. Uh, think about things you did as a kid. Uh, when I have a group here, I'll go outside and play instead of ultimate Frisbee, ultimate football. We're running, we're changing directions, we're catching. And kids who lack athleticism have lacked exposure to different sports. The other thing is, if you are the wrestling coach, the warm-up should have these games. You could play like so small space soccer. You could play um, the uh, ultimate right. football. Especially because wrestling's been so like uh, just re- everyone's just a lot of kids are just wrestling wrestling now, year round. Sports. Right. So yeah. if you look at come across old videos of the Russians or any Eastern European athlete let's say it was their Olympic lifting team of the seventies, you'd see them playing basketball. You'd see them doing cross country skiing. You'd see them running through trails, jumping over things. Their warmups were a modified gymnastics warmup. So the best, whether it's a wrestler or another sport, they were best prepared by having overall athleticism. And so that's what I work on here at the underground strength gym. Our training is centered on athleticism, not just strength or just speed and agility, or all these kind of buzzwords. I want to build you into a better athlete. So we jump, we throw objects. Also getting stronger will build intramuscular coordination. So um, when you said that, I was thinking of a kid who really struggled on everything because bottom line was he was so weak, like he could barely do a body weight squat. And so the warm up and doing different carries and then the warm up that we do, like playing some pickup basketball that built his athleticism. A a mom left me a voicemail. If I train eight year olds and I do not want an eight year old in an organized strength and sport performance program. So when I call her back, I'm going to say, no, he should do, you know, football or soccer, then wrestling, then lacrosse, then something else in the summer here. Like my son plays uh, baseball and basketball. But then in the fall, they have flag football. It's just constant exposure to different sports. All right. I think we're good. Oh, want to do last question here. Let's do this as the last question. We just started freestyle and Greco in Tennessee. I'm also playing baseball and doing track. Did you play other sports and do different things year round? I remember you played baseball your freshman yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's funny. I played baseball a lot. I mean, growing up, I, I yeah, I played football. Actually, I tried everything. I got kicked out of soccer. I got you kicked did? out of basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I was wrestling too many people. That's but funny. yes, yes, Rockland, at your age, try everything. Try I like every it. sport. And it sounds uh-huh. like he's young. Yeah, being able to do these kind of Ro- Rockland's a beast. Sports. He's a beast. Uh, he started at Joker Wrestling when I was coaching there i think he was in kindergarten first grade and he's in love wrestling yeah love wrestling love competing so yeah go out there compete compete with other sports fall in love with competing play as many sports as you can wrestling will always be there i know there's always clubs you can always wrestle i like Um, that he's he's probably playing rec or travel baseball he's probably doing middle school track which i think sprinting is one of the most effective yet simplest form of power development Uh, it's interesting how many kids can't sprint if you just say you know how you get good at sprinting is you don't train an individual and say we're going to sprint you set up three four five ten people and make them race right competing makes your it teaches your body to fire as hard as you can oh here's what i was thinking what was interesting right i'm having like short-term memory <laughs> loss i don't know what's going on but the warm-up we do in here i remember once taking a group of athletes across the street to the park and doing the same thing except now they're on the grass and the sun is shining and we don't have a roof over. And they were like exhausted. And I said, guys, 
we haven't done anything different here, minus a few extra sprints, um, and we're outdoors. The environment has changed. You, I think you guys are like nervous that we're not under a roof and you let it emotionally exhaust you. And so that being said, with athleticism and being better at competing, uh, move and do things in different environments. So if you always wrestle at a club, what I think is cool is uh, with, the, with COVID and the, the ending or, and I don't wanna say ending, they stopped a lot of the middle school wrestling these clubs started getting together and like, hey, I'll visit your club with my guys. You'll visit my club. And that put them in a different element. So I think that's important. If you're always training in your comfortable environment, you will halt athletic progress. And so you want to get into, you want to expose yourself to things that challenge you. And it would be the same thing for, you know, a power lifter. Listen, if you're always training alone, now get a training partner or go visit another gym and utilize different equipment. That exposure uh, and just train somewhere else, it challenges you mentally and physically. And so those things have to get tied together. All right. Great. See, I think that's it. I think that's all we got. I'm gonna check one more on here. Yeah, I think that's good. Appreciate it guys. The pre-match routine, right? It's just staying consistent. Love competing, mm -hmm. right? And always be honest with yourself. I like that. Be honest with yourself. Uh, don't lie to yourself. If you're not doing the work, we've hammered home preparation, pre-match routine. People should bookmark this video wherever they find it and come back to it again and again. And coaches should share this with their staff members. And maybe you could share it with parents yeah. of wrestlers because parents are the piece of the puzzle. I've, I've said it before, our best kids, 99.9% .9 of the time have highly supportive parents. Right. You know, it's, um, can some kids make it without supportive parents? Of course, there's always an outlier, but parents have to be supportive of this. And then at the college sector, for the coaches to do this, you know, now you empower your kids because right. you got the young adult wrestler. You give them the knowledge and the information to say, hey, here's your opportunity to study and get better. All right. And conversations, right? Coaches and athletes, conversations, have an open dialogue, you know, because coaches aren't mind readers. They don't know what's going on in your mind. They don't know. Everyone learns differently too, right? Yes. Some people are visual. Some people, you know, need to do things. Same thing with, 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 with wrestling, right? Um, some things work for kids that don't. So instead of trying to figure out what works for them, ask them, right? See what, see what works for them or what doesn't. Yes. Heck yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. So this was great. Ray Jazz, where do they find out more? Yeah, so WrestleMindset.com, right? If you guys want to do a free trial, we have the free trial page there. Um, I appreciate you guys. We're always pumping out great content. Uh, you can follow Zach on his Instagram. You can follow me personally on my Instagram. I, took a, I deleted my social apps for a few yeah. weeks. Uh, it's still, it's yeah. still there. Took He's a little, smart. I should do that too. But. Took a little break. Um, <laughs> for yeah. you guys that want training content, um, if you Google underground strength gym or go on my YouTube, there are some impersonators I'm gonna put it out there. <laughs> okay. Some fakers. We don't have any licensees or franchise. So we got, if you're in New Jersey, underground strength gym.com. If you are, you know, outside of New Jersey, go to Zach That's my free newsletter. You can see our store over at Zach Evanish. I've got close to 5,000 free YouTube videos. So if you want to learn wrestling, you go to my YouTube channel, hit the search button, type in wrestling, and you will have a gazillion videos to study and learn from. And the best way to learn is by doing. So don't just watch. If you're watching a video, take notes about how you will take action with what you've learned. Put it to the test. All right. All right, guys. Yep. So we're going to put this up on our YouTube. It's going to be on our Instagram. Uh, it's going to be on Rockfin, Rockfin. too. Yep. Um, I, I have plenty of stuff on my personal Instagram, too, but... Rest of mindset, that's where we're going to have most of the stuff. So appreciate you guys. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you guys. Bye. Have a good one. Oh, this we're going to yeah, show how does this that down go? here. Stop recording.